Hello, and welcome back to Dreamforce 2024. Really happy to have you on board and listening to us as we broadcast live from the NYSE, where we've set up a studio just outside the Moscone Center. And today, really, we're delving into so many different pieces of what Salesforce brings to offer and the ecosystem around them. And this one is near and dear to my heart as somebody who's uh, run customer success before at a startup and really looking forward to diving into Tatango, who merged with Catalyst, and we're joined by Edward Chu, who's the co-CEO. So welcome on board. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so let's kind of delve into a little bit what it means, the merger of the two companies, and what you're offering, and why you're here this week. Yeah, so for those of you that uh, don't know, uh, both Tatango and Catalyst are a customer growth platform. So long story short, we help software companies retain more customers and grow more revenue from their existing customers. Pretty important right now uh, in this economic climate. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, anybody who's uh, public or not public, NRR, so net retained revenue is really important and customer success is a big piece of that. And like you said, you know, the economic climate and strategies, what are you talking to customers about when you see what's going on in this economic you know, environment around that. And how does that really tie back into what you're doing here? Yeah, great question. And that ties back to actually your original question of why we merged. Uh, so, you know, Tatango and Catalyst, two competitors uh, competing in the market very, very aggressively against each other. And one day we decided, you know what? We're hearing the same things from the market, both our publicly traded customers as well as private, privately held venture backed startups. The number one thing is resounding in board meetings. The only thing that everything, every leadership team is talking about right now is how do we keep more of our customers? How do we have less focus on new business revenue? How do we put less pressure on account executives and SDRs to drive more uh, new business revenue and bring that to your existing customers? And these are customers that you already have. You've already spent a long time acquiring them. You spend a lot of dollars marketing to them. You spend a lot of resources onboarding them. Yet most businesses do not have significant penetration and extraction of revenue from the customers that they already have. So um, we saw that as a very important factor, especially in this climate. I mean, we continue to see massive layoffs. I think you know Microsoft and IBM recently just had a pretty large layoff, and we continue to see that trickle down and. It is very, very important right now for a business to figure out how do you bring more impact and sell more of the services that you've already have on your product um, to, to your to your core base. Yeah, not even that. I mean, even AWS announced some just today as well. So when you look at this, I mean, especially like you said, publicly traded, non-publicly traded startups, it's really the cost to acquisition cost of a new customer is just uh, is usually I believe the statistic is 1.2 to one to almost two X the cost of keeping and That's doing right. that. How do you guys help really drive that revenue and how do you really deliver that by helping them retain their customers? What do you what do you do? What is it the magic that you're doing? to help them with that. You know, I, I never thought there'd be a day where AWS is announcing layoffs given, you know, how rapidly infrastructure growth is, but here we are. Yeah. The one thing that we do incredibly well for, for businesses is we aggregate all of their customer data. It is very, very hard to upsell to your customers if you don't know where they are in their customer life cycle, how much of your product have they already adopted or not adopting, and where are they finding the most value? You can't possibly, upsell them and your account managers can't have productive conversations if you don't have that information. So that's step one. We help you aggregate all of your customer information from Salesforce, Snowflake, Redshift, BigQuery, uh, Zendesk, Jira, all into one singular view. And believe it or not, it's in this day and age with as much software as we have, it is still very, very difficult for businesses to see their customer data in one singular view. Uh, secondly, we help your CSMs and account managers cover more accounts. You'll hear the word operating efficiency as a big term right now for a lot of businesses. How do you, you know, uh, extract more out of the employees that you you already have? And account managers have big jobs, and right now they're managing hundreds of hundreds of accounts. How do you make sure they do that effectively? And the last, well, the last probably core piece is we automate that communication. So, to put it simply, you can say. 
If a customer is upcoming for renewal in the next 90 days, there are some of our best customers over uh, XYZ and, and spend automatically send a proactive email so that we can engage them at the right moment. So part of the automation is a very popular term called digital customer success that many businesses are, are embarking on right now. So those are probably the three core tenants that, that we help businesses um, achieve success with right now. What for those who aren't that advanced and haven't gotten because I could tell you I had Zendesk, I had, yeah. uh, you know, I had support cloud, I had everything plus Salesforce. And we were trying to bring it all together. And it was it was a nightmare, uh, to put it to put it simply. How how do you help customers really get to that digital customer success? What and what does that mean to them? Yeah, a lot of businesses think about this challenge as a data challenge. So they'll say, you know what, we're not ready for any digital customer success until we're done with this data challenge. And a lot of times their Salesforce instances are messy. I know it's Dreamforce week, but you know, that's, you know, there's decades long of data. I, I, I don't think any, <laughs> I don't think anybody, including us who uses Salesforce will, uh, will argue with you. It's a mess. <laughs> that's right. So generally the statement is, oh, my Salesforce is a mess. It's going to take me a long time to even clean up my Salesforce before I even unify that with other data. So that's exactly it. We clean up your Salesforce. We pair that with your ticketing data. We pair that with your uh, customer feedback data. And we organize it for you in a way that is easily accessible. And also you can do segmentation. And part of what we do very well is modern technology and user experience that is very easy to use. If you have no technical background, uh, you don't know how to do SQL query, you don't know how to set up um, complicated BI dashboards, you are able to do customer segmentation onto Tango and Catalyst. And that's the beauty of it is we want to make sure anyone in the company can better understand the customer so that marketing team wants to drive upsell, you know how to slice and dice. If you're the SDR team, oh, and this is a huge trend right now. Sales development reps who are historically responsible for driving new business revenue, they're now being assigned, go after our existing accounts, do massive expansion on our Googles, on our Amazons, uh, on our IBMs, and go find opportunities within multiple departments within that org. So, uh, we help a lot of them get, gather this information. Yeah, I, I think that that's a key for many organizations is how do you get more out of the resources you have and enable them. Uh, I, I, I know that, you know, again, many C-suites are talking about how do they not only, you know, ex land the first account or get net, net new logos, but how do they expand within those and upsell and cross sell? Is that what is kind of enabled by the platform? I speak with CROs all the time. Many of them are here at, at Dreamforce. And one of the biggest things that they've been assigned and told is historically you own the sales team. You have the VP of sales that roll up to you. Now you have a lot of organizations in which they're merging the sales organizations with the CS organization, the account management organization. So that's exactly it. You have these hunter like uh, sales leaders that historically only know how to get new business. Yet all of a sudden they are now responsible for finding gold in the customer trove that they already have. So it's a very difficult job. It, you have to be very data driven because you are going after customers and you're combining their you know quarterly business review feedback to their sentiment scores on weekly calls to their net promoter scores and also just conversations in real time that you're having so how do you get all of that and then find opportunities that's that's exactly what we do for our customers so you're you're helping really kind of i guess you could say uh normalize that data across those multiple different places that that's exactly right in. and you're then putting it in a language that a cro could understand from a customer success if they're kind of the persona that's uh, heading this thing up. Not only could they understand, if you have a thousand customers, the chances of you reaching a thousand customers at the right time, at the right moment in which they are ready for an upsell is close to impossible because you can't expect your reps, they all of a sudden get a Slack message that they have to adhere to. All of a sudden they got to go to lunch or they go on vacation or they get sick. You still have those, windows of time where it's very critical for you to reach out to those customers. So we standardize it, then we allow you to automate that process so that you will always have a message that comes from the right stakeholder in your org to the customer at the right time, and it's completely automated. So 
I think that's a big part of, you know, where AI and automation is playing is how do you make sure that you're touching customers at the right moment? Because a lot of times that moment makes the difference because, you know, I think a lot of people say August is a tough time to drive expansion because everyone's out on vacation. How do you know exactly when to reach out to those customers is, is also what we help you do. Yeah, I, I think that's a, such a great insight is the fact that there are so many different times when people are looking and you don't even, you miss it. You miss the opportunity because you weren't there. I mean, in marketing, they call it nurturing and all of that fun jazz. But when you start to look at it, it's really about servicing the customer and making sure that you're, you're engaged with them. How, how you, you brought up the word AI. So how do you see that playing out as part of this entire ecosystem and, and how it really feeds into this as well? You know, I brought it up because my marketing team's sitting right there. So it's an <laughs> obligatory term that, that you got to bring up, especially when you're at Dreamforce. But um, all jokes aside, I think AI is is only as good as the data foundations that you have. And I think that's what puts us in a very unique position is we have seen, we have thousands and thousands of records from big customers like SAP, Google, Schneider, um, GitHub, in which we understand churn, churn uh, analysis. We understand historical trends. We understand industries that are doing well and not doing well. We understand what playbooks work well when it comes to driving automation. So. Our advantage is that we can take all the data that has worked for our customers and make great recommendations on, hey, this customer is probably someone that you wanna reach out to because based on historical churn data, they're starting to look like they're, they're not doing well. Or, hey, this customer has sent hundreds of messages and based on sentiment analysis, they're not doing well. But AI can only go so far, but I, you, see a lot of, uh, you see a lot of movement right now that's happening across every industry. So you're also helping not only that, but you help by providing the right data at the right time to the right individual in that organization so they, they can make some of that determination as well. Exactly. So a lot of people think you could just spin up AI and in and, and a matter of seconds and you start, you know, it starts doing everything for you, right? And I think that's the key difference. What I'm trying to relay is that you have to have a lot of historical data. You have to, there's some manual effort there. You have to know which of your CSM's messages that they've sent actually drives ROI. And then you can build off more of that template. So um, the more data that you're sitting on top of, the more that we're able to enable for you. Yeah, I, I think that to me is one of the big pieces is about how the whole organization is enabled by that. You have human in the loop and you choose which are the automatic things versus one. How do you help organizations understand what should be automatic versus what should be human intervened in and things of that nature? Yeah, if it was up to CFOs right now, I think they would say, you know, can, can your software just replace my whole team? And the reality is, I think we're, we're still a little ways from that. I think most people, when they buy software, they expect to drive onboarding implementation. I think Klarna brought up a, a the big thing they wanted to replace Salesforce and replace HubSpot and, and build everything in house through AI. And the reality is when you buy software, you're not just buying the software, you're buying the know-how you're buying the onboarding and experience. You're buying the implementation. You're buying the best practices that you're generally not going to get from AI because AI just doesn't know best practices. Right? So, I mean, anyone who uses chat GPT can ask for best practices, but it's getting pulled from Reddit. It's getting pulled from forums. Like, those are not real world applications that you're, you're gonna get from, from AI just yet. What, what are you seeing as some of the key drivers that are kind of the, the red flags that somebody should be engaging with you guys and saying, hey, you know, we're not getting effectiveness out of X, Y, and Z, or we're missing out on this opportunity. What are the things that drive people to you? Yeah, well, when some people come to us and say, hey, we, we need you guys to to clean up all, all of our data and, and, and help us understand how to do customer success. As someone who's done customer yeah. success, you know that no software can help you do customer success. What they do come to us for is, hey, we've organized a lot of data. We have a modernized tech stack. What we need is to identify more upsell opportunities. We need to know which accounts are our most successful customers and which accounts should we just no longer sell to because they're no longer bringing in the right amount of dollars or they're just too expensive for us to service. So how do you slice and dice that data very, very quickly, organize it so that when you are in board meetings, you can have that very important discussion, which is which market should we tackle right now? 
which customer should we focus on next quarter? And um, that's probably the most important thing that every business is coming to us for right now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's I I know it is because we were in with uh, Hak Tan, the CEO of Broadcom, and this is exactly the conversation he had around VMware and what they're doing with VMware is how do you really focus in on these things? And I think every board meeting, you know, that is going on is looking at how do we do more with less. Kind of final word. What what do you think? you're expecting this week and why should people come and seek you guys out today or actually tomorrow when we start up yeah um <laughs> you know if your business is is crushing it and and new business revenue is is flying off the shelf and you barely have to spend any marketing dollars and people are just clicking request demo on on your on your site you probably don't need this but i probably just describe you know sub five percent of what's happening in the market right now and i think for us What's very, very valuable is you don't have to do a lot. Most people think that there it's this huge amount of effort to get up and running. We help businesses get up and running in a, in a matter of days. It's very easy to organize a day. The hard part is what playbooks and what systems do you want to deploy? And we're still able to do that in a couple of weeks. So I think software is just getting better and better. And that's a big part of why the merger was so exciting is because we took a platform that had the best user experience and combined that with a platform that has the best enterprise experience. And you won't find another platform that has best of both worlds. So um, we're excited to, to, to talk with people that are interested and, and, and um, looking forward to this week. No, that's great. I think, you know, if you're looking for all of that knowledge, kind of almost a, uh, a center of excellence for customer success in a box. Yeah. But we're in a cloud, depending <laughs> on how you look at it. But thanks for coming on board, Edward. Thank you so much for having me. Yep. And thank you for watching this episode of Dreamforce 2024 live from the NYSE. We got tons more coming to you over today and tomorrow, at least another one today. So stay tuned.